Steve, uh, first of all, I know these numbers are choppy right. and they aren't terribly reliable. At the same time, we're always focused on them because the, the day before That's we get the non-farms payroll. Uh, what do you make of the job situation? You know, I, you've got an economy that's growing at around two, two and a half percent. You've got an economy that's on average generating about 170, 175,000 jobs. That's where we've been. That's where we continue to be. We have a lot of volatility up and down in the monthly numbers, but at the end of the day, 170, 175 has been the right, you know, long-term estimate, and that continues to be where we are. And I think these claims numbers are consistent with that. So, Steve, if I'm an investor, or for that matter, if I'm on the Fed, do I care about that number, or do I care about the wage number? Well, you, right now, you care about the wage number, and you care about where inflation is going to go going forward. And I think that's the critical piece to to deal with as we go forward into into the new year. Luke, have investors cared less and less about disappointments and chalked in disappointments in economic data increasingly up to simply? Uh, I don't know, messy data. Uh, messy and data, yeah. transitory, right. take your pick. We've, we've been gotten very good. We've gotten very desensitized to any bad news because even as we've gotten bad news, once the narrative was bad news, is good news for stocks. Right. But now it's just bad news, who cares? Right. We can, we're easily able to shrug it off. And this year, we've been able to shrug off almost growth data completely. Uh, GDP, ISM, non-farm payrolls, they haven't had the same effect, especially re relative to inflation data in terms of the app absolute reaction in, you know, say, 10-year yields, uh, stocks. That's something that Bank of America put out in their year ahead recently. It was just kind of stunning. We've seen the Fed's reaction functions change, and the market has kind of zeroed in on wage inflation and inflation as what to watch, and that's what we react on now. Steve, I'd love to get your sense. I mean, is this the truth from your perspective, that people are more concerned about an upside surprise than they are about a downside? Well, I think point? while you have this tax cut issue looming in the background, there's tended to be a little bit less focus on where we are today rather than where people think we're going to tomorrow. And when you look at the optimism that people have attached to this kind of program, uh, I think people are, are actually applying too much optimism uh, to are what's going to happen. I think so, because I think the Federal Reserve at the end, A, there are two things. One, the GOP has consistently shot itself in the foot. Uh, and I'm not 100% sure they're going to pull this off because there's still a lot of gerrymandering that has to go on between the two bills and keeping the Tea Party in line. But have they made it a, a, a lot farther, a lot faster than you thought they would? They've shot themselves in the foot fairly quickly before. This time, it's gone a long way. Well, again, they've, they've decided they'd get through the House and they'd get through the Senate with different versions, and then they're going to beat each other up in the conference committee and see whether they can come up with something that, at the end, they can all vote on. Um, so, yeah, there's a bit more pressure on them because they failed so badly on the health care. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, these people still have to go back to their constituents, especially the Tea Party people, and say, hey, look, we're spending a trillion four over the next 10 years, and we've got no way to pay for it. 